time for the last film focus of 2012. We are, of course, joined by Emily Cook of Real Vision Film Solutions. Not as tired this week, though, are we? I'm not as tired. Last week uh, we'd had a long shoot, but this week I'm fresh as a daisy. Oh, that's nice to hear. So who have we got as our special guest this week? This week on Film Focus with Real Vision, we have local actor and filmmaker Matt Corcoran as our special guest. Hello, Matt. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me here. Nice to have you here. A few weeks ago on Film Focus, we spoke about the 100th film as part of Isle of Man film that's been shot here on the island, Dom Hemingway. Mm. About two weeks ago, it was over here. And you had some involvement with it, didn't you? What, what was your role? Um, I was stand-in for Jude Law. What does that mean? Uh, a stand-in is somebody who is used for the uh, crew, the camera guys, the lighting people, to set up their lights and their shots. Uh, so they need somebody of sort of similar height and build. Similar height and build to who? To to whoever they're standing in for. In my case, it was Jude Law. Oh. <laughs> oh, you like that. Does it help that you're equally as handsome as Jude Law? Uh, yeah, it does. It's it's kind of essential, actually. No, that's... <laughs> no. <laughs> um, you just need to be same height, build, colouring, um, just so the lights, when they set the lights up, you know, they sort of reflect in the same way that they will do when they get the actor in. Um, and likewise for the shots... Um, they, the, the camera operators will rehearse their shots. Um, so they don't have to do that when they've got the super duper actor on set. So it's not wasting his time. Exactly. Yeah. And also because he's got to deliver a a performance and it needs to be fresh and vibrant Mm -hmm. and have some life to it. If he's just been sitting on set for an hour while all the crew set up, their bits and pieces, he's going to have lost his edge by the time it actually comes for him to do his thing, you know. So So. you keep Jude Law fresh? Yeah, I guess so. (laughs) (laughs) Um, When you were on set, how important was it that you were the same build and size? Because for this film, he actually had to build himself up a bit, didn't he? Yeah, Uh, he had been working out a bit. Um, To reach your your level of, of... I think he'd heard, actually, that I was, you know, quite hench myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, Matt, what was the experience like on set? Just the overall experience of being on a set with world-class professionals um, and the kind of atmosphere there is. I've worked on lots of short films um, and done little things like that, Um And lots of training in class and acting classes. Um, And obviously, you never really get to put that into practice Mm. for a major feature film, you know, unless you're very, very lucky. Um, So this was just a great way to to get that experience and to see how they do it. And actually, it's no different at all, you know. Mm. It's no different from the experiences that I've had on on short films and all of those things. It's just on a bigger scale. It's great in terms of sort of boosting your confidence as an actor and as somebody who is into film, who who makes films, because you kind of realise that you are going about it the right way, you know. We've worked together on several films in the past, haven't we, Matt? Yeah, we have. Um, yeah. Can you tell the people out there a bit about that? Yeah, well, I think the last one we did was for the Scene Stealer Challenge with Man in Shorts. Or the one last week, indeed, uh, Amy's Choice, where you played Man Enraged trying to get into a nightclub. Oh, that's right, drunk yeah. Man. yeah. Um, Excellently, might I add. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, that was good fun. And before that, you were my Benjamin, weren't you? That's right, yeah, I was your Benjamin. In, and that was the scene stealer challenge for Man in Shorts. Yes, it was. Um, the object of the exercise was to replicate a scene from an iconic film. And your film was The Graduate. The seduction scene, nonetheless. That's right. That's right. Um, with with uh, Manx Radio's own Ashley Bentley. Yes. Playing Mrs. Robinson. Yes. <laughs> and she had to seduce you, which I, I don't she think did. you were complaining at. Um. But it was quite, you had quite a challenge there in that acting role because you had to play 
somebody who was quite a lot younger than you. Yeah, not that much younger, I don't think. (laughs) And you also had to play, had to dress yourself and look like you were from the 60s. Yeah, I did. had its own challenges as well. Yeah, yeah. Behaviours and mannerisms, because we basically had to create shot for shot, movement by movement. um, Exactly. Exactly the scene um, from the original. It was, the task was to replicate as closely as possible, wasn't it? Um, So you had the the, the set built which was fabulous. And then all the camera angles all worked out exactly, And even so down to the smallest detail of you having to look down and step <clears throat> over one of the camera rails, which is that's a mistake right. that's in the original film yeah. that Dustin Hoffman looks yeah. down and he steps yeah. over um, the track. And uh, we even put that in, yeah. didn't we? Yeah, I don't know how you knew that because this, this was kind of a process of reverse engineering in a way, wasn't it? Mm. Um, and, and so my job was not so much a sort of straightforward acting job as I would normally know it and do it. It was more of an impersonation. Yes. Which is kind of goes kind of goes against the grain a bit because that's what you get taught not to do. That's a bit of a no no, you know. But in this case, it was appropriate. So I had to work on my American accent. Which I think you did excellently on. And even so much as because we were trying to mimic it so accurately, the phrases and the pacing were yeah. spot on as well that you used yeah. when you were speaking. Yeah, uh, that's very kind of you. I remember Ashley having a little giggle now and again. I think there were times when I was coming out a bit New York. <laughs> New York. <laughs> Have a coffee and a bagel. <laughs> So you've done a fair bit on short films on the island. Yeah. Um, what would your... We like to ask our guests what their top tip would be to give people who are maybe interested in acting or getting involved um, on film production at a, a small right. level. What would you suggest they do? Um, I think I think um, acting in films and, and making films, and I'm talking about short films... Um, it's not something you can do on your own. So get together with some like-minded people. You know, if you've got mates that are interested, team up with them and write a script and just just make it, you know, even if you use the camera on your phone, you know, just start doing it. Take some footage and edit it together, just a short sequence. And it's the process, and, isn't it, that allows you to learn, not necessarily the equipment you have to hand or the experience. Absolutely. It's doing it. Absolutely. And and from, from an acting point of view, the more you do it, the better. So, yeah, do that. And then, of course, Man in Shorts. We, we're big fans of Man in Shorts here yeah. at Film Focus with Real Vision. Yeah, yeah. Um, get on their mailing list, get in touch with them. There's just a great organisation of interested enthusiasts skilled people they've you know they've got they've got everything going haven't they they've got editors camera people directors so whatever your interest is in film that is where you need to go really that that is the collective pool of creativity and technical skill and we're very lucky to have that here on the island absolutely yeah it's great um well thank you very much for joining us today and all the best of luck matt with your future projects well thank you it's my pleasure it's actually really nice, Emily, to hear an actor's point of view because we've focused on the technical side of things, which I know is more your forte. But it's nice to hear um, where they're coming from because it is a collaboration when it comes to these sort Absolutely, of things. Absolutely, yes. So what have we got coming up after the track that you've chosen then? We're going to go for a bit of ACDC Back in Black. Emily described it to me as, you know that song that's ding, 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 ding. Yeah, so we're going to play that next. But before, <laughs> before we do that, uh, on the other side of the track, we're going to be talking about... Great expectations. We're going to have a bit of a review because we talked about that not so long ago. Emily's going to be giving us her top tips as to what we should be watching over the festive season. And of course, we'll have our session track for replay. But first, it's time for a bit of ACDC. So festive that track, isn't it? It's really getting me in the Christmas mood. ACDC on Film Focus with Real Vision. Right then, Emily, uh, you went to see Great Expectations. We talked about it in week seven. What were your thoughts? It did something very interesting. It drew two parallels which both utilised what we know and love Dickens for. What Dickens always does is he uses long, drawn-out plots with maybe not so much activity and then suddenly there's a load of activity all in one go. 
That was the weakness of the film, but I must admit, obviously, it harkens back to Dickens' style. The other parallel that was drawn was actually through uh, the costume design, um, which was done by Beatrix Aurora Pastor, who stylistically borrowed from the 80s punk movement to dress the aristocratic gentleman in the film. This was done in such a way that it highlighted the characteristics of those characters' personalities, which is actually something that Dickens does in his novels. Um, He takes the ugly characteristics and magnifies them in their behaviour and in the descriptions of them. Likewise, uh, that's what Beatrix did with the costume and the uh, the look of the individual characters. I thought that was very clever how they, they did that. So that's a film that you told us to go and have a look at a couple of weeks ago. Now, my precious, tell me about <laughs> what this week's one to watch is. Less of your pet names for me, <laughs> Ashley. This week it is Peter Jackson's um, film, The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey. Obviously, he's well known and loved for um, his Lord of the Rings trilogy. But now he's back with The Hobbit, uh, starring Ian McKellen as Gandalf and Martin Freeman as Bilbo Baggins. It's now screening in 3D at the Palace Cinema. If people don't know anything about the the plot line, um, it's about a younger and more reluctant Hobbit, Bilbo Baggins, sets out on an unexpected journey to the Lonely Mountain with a spirited group of dwarves to reclaim their stolen mountain home from a dragon named Smog. I am going to be honest, I haven't read the book and I don't know the story. So would you say that I just go in and submerse myself and just watch it? Or do I do a bit of research before I go? Do I read the book before I watch the film? What would you say? I think with The Hobbit, because it's slightly separate from the Lord of the Rings trilogy, I would suggest reading the book. Um... Generally, it's it's always good to read the book because that's where the first art form of any film that's become an adaptation is, is from. Um, it's kind of respectful, I think, to, to do that. When I was very young, I read the book, so um, I'm, I am definitely going to go and see it. Um, it's It looks spectacular from the trailers. And has it been received critically? Because I know that it's a huge success with the fans. It's done really well in the box office and stuff. Is it going down well with the the film fraternity? Well, on IMDb, it's actually been rated 8.6. And as you know from previous weeks, that's actually a pretty high Yeah, rating. Hook was only like three or something, wasn't well, it? Well, I've got issues with that because they obviously don't understand a masterpiece of nostalgia if they're rating Hook that low. No, but 8.6 is well up there, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Seeing as you're not going to be with us for a couple of weeks, you rejoin us in 2013. Thought it might be nice to get another tip for you. Is there anything else we should be watching? A good one to watch over the Christmas period is Life of Pi, which is currently showing at the Palace Cinema um, in Douglas. Many people may have read the book by Jan Martel. What struck me about this film is if you watch the trailer, the cinematography in it is absolutely stunning. It's It just looks... A, utterly amazing and there's lots of cgi with the animals because for those that don't know it it's about uh, this young man who is on a boat and then disaster hits although he's got a whole load of animals on the boat with him and obviously some of them then play a major part within the rest of the film and his interaction with them is key to the plot i think that i must be out of the loop this week because i've not read the hobbit and i hadn't come across life of pi but apparently that's got a huge following as well the book has been really well received but i stumbled across the trailer i think it was just on as an advert in between a tv program i was watching i was absolutely blown away you're right i mean i can appreciate that that's a wow trailer even though that i'm not as sort of learned as you are but if you can look at it and go that's fantastic then it's definitely something that we should be paying attention to absolutely the cinematography is stunning and the cgi as well it's nearly it for film focus for 2012 it's really good having you up and long may it continue into 2013 it's always lovely to be here ashley before you go um leave us with a christmas present if you will what would you like this week's session track replay to be my christmas present wrapped up in a box with a ribbon on it is going to be matt Creer and kath crow with keep us it was such a beautiful song and they had some magical harmonies in it their voices work really well together they really do um if you haven't seen the video before go on to the saturday night live facebook page and check it out we will reshare it there for you but we'll also play it for you now this is matt Creer and Kath Crow on Saturday Night Live and keep us. Thanks, Emily. See you in the new year. See you in 2013.